Oracle Marketing Club. And um, we also have Sai Narayan, the Group Vice President and Head of Marketing for Paisa Bardo. And the way we structured the session is that Madhukar will set a context, a framework, um, high-level overview. And then Sai Narayan is going to share with us the practical aspects as a practitioner. How do you actually remove friction for your customer? With that, I'm going to hand over to Madhukar. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, let me just make sure the logistics are working okay. Can you hear me okay? Uh, Jesse, is, is my voice audible? Is it loud and clear? Okay, great. Uh, all right, and I'll just now share um, my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, the screen is up. Uh, so I think we are okay on the logistics side. You can hear me okay. You can see my yeah. see my screen. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesse, and uh, th thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time today. Um, as Jesse just introduced, my name is Madhukar, and, uh, and I work as a principal consultant for Oracle Marketing Cloud in the region. Uh, I also head the solution consulting team uh, and this division for Oracle. Uh, as part of my role, I spend a lot of time, in fact, most of my time working with marketers and prospects to understand their objective, their pain areas, and how can Oracle uh, technology help them achieve their marketing goals. Uh, well, before we start this session, you know, I thought I will just uh, start this session with some use cases first. Something that we we as consumers face every day, something, something that we at times feel frustrated about, right? And that will set the context of why we all are here in this uh, session and what are we discussing? What is the problem that we are trying to solve? And these are all some real life use cases. In fact, the first use case that I'm going to talk about is something I personally came across a few months back um, when I was looking for a life insurance policy. And like everyone else, I was also doing my research. I was going to various uh, you know, uh, life insurance websites, generating quotes and looking at their offers, uh, looking at the settlement rate and so on. And I narrowed down on uh, four and five options, which I thought were the best. And then I finally purchased policy from one of the uh, life insurance policy providers. Till that point, everything was fine. But what happened was um, I realized that even after I became a customer, I could see their ads on Facebook. Uh, when I was reading some, some articles from Times of India and some other publishers, I could see that they're chasing me, which I could not understand why, because I already am their customers. And I realized uh, that, in fact, I received the pre-email promotions from them as well. Although, you know, later on, I realized it might have been the agency, but Still, I'm their customer, and I was just thinking, why can't they just suppress me from the marketing communication um, or send me more customer-centric communication rather than a prospect-centric communication? And this, this really made me think about the disconnect that exists between the advertising and the marketing world, and it's not working in sync. And Sai, I would really uh, love to hear from you. Looking forward to your session on how you are solving this problem, because I see Policy Bazaar um, and we are, I, I am your customer and I have seen some great experience from your company. So I, I would like to hear from you as well how you are uh, solving this problem. The second use case is actually from one of my friends in Delhi. She works for a real estate company and she said she was looking for a lead management solution from one of the local vendors. And um, she wasn't sure actually when she was making this decision of buying this lead solution whether her team will be comfortable, if the budget is fine or not. So she asked the company representative that give me an option to try it out. And the representative said, we don't have a trial option, but I can work on discounts for you. You know, the normal sales uh, guys and uh, they're working on the discount. So the sales representative went back working on the discount. In the meantime, my friend received an email saying that uh, you can try the solution for 60 days. Uh, we are promoting a trial version. So her experience was that why, why was the rep not aware of this or why did they, he not tell me about this promotion and trial because that was my first choice. So this is a, you know, this is a typical example where marketing and sales uh, teams have, are working on 
different silos and different applications and different data sets. Uh, in an ideal situation, marketing should not have sent that email and let the sales guy continue that conversation with, uh, with my friend. But what happened was a, was a, you know, a disjointed a communication that went from both marketing and sales. Well, the third use case is, is interesting. This is from one of my colleagues who sits next to me here at Oracle. And he was one day a little pissed with the travel company he uh, recently booked his holiday with. And when I asked him what happened, he told me that you know, he recently booked a holiday in, and uh, he had to cancel it for some, some personal emergency. And he was looking for the refund back into his account, but it was delayed and he was calling the call center back and they were saying that there was some public holiday, the banks were closed, so he has to wait for some more time. And in the meantime, he was just thinking whether he should send an email or follow up on the refund. And he was really waiting to hear back from the travel, travel company. In the meantime, he received three promotional emailers about holidays in Thailand and ho another holiday in Goa. And he was just wondering that, look, I canceled my ticket. <laughs> I'm really waiting for somebody to uh, process the refund for me. And here, here I'm receiving these promotional emailers. So this is, a, this is another example where a service team is working on the refund, but marketing team is unaware and they're sending a continuous you know, communication. So, and, and really, uh, I thought of bringing these uh, use cases um, right on the top of the session, my session especially, because these are some scenarios that we encounter every day as customers. And the worst part is, the worst part is that we have accepted it as a routine. Uh, we really believe that it must be the marketing department and they must be unaware of what's happening with me. So that's fine. I'll just ignore these emails. And, and really, if you look at your mailbox today, if you look at your SMS today, if you look at the post notifications today, there are so many information, so many notifications, so many promotions that we receive, and we ignore them. Why? Because we have kind of accepted uh, it's, it's, it's a routine, you know, they are just sending us communication, and that's fine. Or we'll just one nice day sit and delete them or not pay attention to them. Um, so let's take a step back. I just want to talk about a very simple customer journey, or rather, a very oversimplified customer journey where we have, we just say we broadly have six steps that we as an organization cover from our acquisition to conversion and all the way to retention. Now, a customer journey could be fairly complex, but for the sake of simplicity uh, and for the sake of session and then taking you to the next slide, I just want to keep a very, um, very simplistic, very simplified customer journey. Now, what we really, really do at the first stage is we start with the target audience in mind. We target them with paid channels or Facebook or Google or media uh, to bring their attention, to make them aware about the products and services that we offer. Once they become aware, they start considering us. So they might come to our website, they might download the app, they might sign up for our newsletter, they might fill up a form, they might do something. They will do a handshake with us and they will start considering us as one of the options. Now, in the, during the consideration stage, um, they would ultimately take a decision and uh, purchase something from us and become a customer. It, it's a typical funnel, right, where we have a lot of people who are considering us and some of them will eventually uh, purchase the products and services that's, that we offer. And then the whole relationship starts where we service them uh, in the best possible way. We try and make sure that they're satisfied, the satisfaction score is high and they become a brand advocate. So they tell others about how good and how good our products and, and services are. Now at every stage of this simplified customer journey, technology plays a very important role. Uh, and what, what I've done here is I've just called out the pieces of technology that are important at every uh, stage of the six step simplified customer journey, right? So if you look at the advertising, the uh, we have digital advertising ecosystem playing a very important role to make the target audience aware about our products and services, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Google, whether it's on media sites and so on. Then we have personalization and optimization and testing tool to influence them when they are in the consideration phase. And once they become a customer, we have the CRM system, the relationship um, and servicing side of things where we service them, we make sure that they get the right service, the best service. If they have a problem, we are ready to, right there to help them via call or live agent or chat or any other uh, method and channel. 
Then comes the loyalty, the net promoter score, the customer satisfaction, the reward part of things where we try and gamify things. We, we try and keep them engaged, keep them motivated to, to stick around, to stay with us, to have more services and products from us. And finally, you know, the social relationship tools and um, the, the social tools to make them a brand advocate, listen to what they're talking on the public side and so on. Now, the, the, main, the main concern here for the marketers is that if it was for 100 customers, no problem. At any point of time, we can intervene. We can, uh, we can make sure that they get a consistent and best experience and we can make the best use of every technology that we have at every stage of customer cycle. Whether it was 1,000 customers, no problem. A few thousand customers, no problem. But the problem really comes when we're trying to uh, make this journey the ideal journey at scale. So as, as modern marketers today, what we really are trying to solve this problem for millions and millions of customers with billions and billions of conversation happening every day. And that's what Forrester came up with. Forrester said the same thing that 82% of the enterprise marketers uh, do not have a synchronized view of customer data. So at one place, they don't know at what stage what is the customer's ask or what's their need? Do they have a service ticket open? Are they looking for more products and services? Are they looking for a refund? Or are they really waiting for us to go back and tell them what more can they buy from us? So data is definitely a problem, which is, which is nothing new to us. We've all been hearing about it. The another concern is the technology itself. I mean, back in 2011, there were 150 odd or maybe a little more or less, 150 odd technology vendors in this scape, in, in, in this landscape, right? And now there are more than 5,000 plus technology vendors offering very niche, very targeted service with their um, data model, with their set of you know, capabilities. And what marketers have done, they've bought these technologies over a period of time. And every technology has its own data set, its own rules, its own you know, um, logic to work. And it just creates the silo problem even, even more exponential. So the result is a broken experience. So many times, you know, we from, from the Oracle consulting team, we work with marketers on a daily basis and we realize that it's, it's really becoming a volume game or it has become a volume game because the marketers are thinking, okay, we have a target to hit. Let's roll out more emails. Let's roll out more push notification, let's just go and burn more money on Facebook. Let's just, you know, so it's, it's becoming a volume game where more emails, more social um, notifications, more SMSs, and more communications mean more conversion. While customers, on the other hand, are saying that, you know, if we don't get a consistent experience, we might as well just treat you irrelevant. And that's, that's really where what we have seen over a period of time. So what's the solution? What are marketers doing to solve this problem? And again, a lot of things that I'm talking about in this session is coming from my own experience working with, with a lot of marketers, marketers like Sai and his team, and marketers across, across industry, across verticals. So I must say that we are right at the middle of, at a stage where this transformation is taking place in the marketing world. Really, as part of Oracle Marketing Cloud Consulting Team, uh, we spend a lot of time with marketers trying to solve these data channel problem. And I must say the organizations have already taken initial steps to be ready to serve the ever demanding and ever connected customer in today's digital world. These are some snippets, what you will see in your screen now, are some snippets that I captured from what I was reading online recently. And what it says is that, you know, organizations are moving from being inward focused, where the primary goal was to sell more goods and more services to maximum number of customers. And organizations are moving to more outward focus where satisfying customer needs and wants and, and uh, satisfying customer goals is becoming the, becoming the key business goal. Uh, we see the KPIs changing. You know, the, the key performance indicator at one point used to be number of sales, but it's slowly customer satisfaction scores is also becoming one of the key metric uh, that companies and enterprises are tracking today. We also see in a lot of our meetings these days that CMOs are not just chief marketing officers, but they're also chief communication officers or chief customer officers. And this role is merging in a lot of organizations we talk to. So CMOs not just control the communication 
that are going out to customers from a promotional activity perspective, but literally enterprise-wide communication that's going out to the customer, which, which ensures that you know, the, the customers receive a consistent message regardless of whether it's a promotional message or if it's something that has to do with their satisfaction or the services uh, with the enterprise. So yes, technology transformation um, is happening and, and it's making this you know, marketers more agile and giving marketers the ability to use this data in a connected way so that they can bring in the hidden intelligence from this data, they can have a connected um, experience, they can deliver the right experience through the right channel, right time, uh, right moment uh, to their customers. And Oracle, again, being part of Oracle uh, Consulting Services and Oracle Marketing Cloud, we have the privilege to work on these tools on a daily basis. Um, and what really we are seeing at Oracle is that um, the, the mantra and the pillars that Oracle is working from a marketing perspective is to give marketers the ability to recognize the customers anywhere, not just our ecosystem, but when a, when a visitor comes to our site and looks at a product and service, not just that information, but what else are they doing outside of our ecosystem? So recognize the customer um, anywhere where they are moving and what they're doing, adapt to their uh, customer journeys, their, their, their unpredictable um, you know, channels and unpredictable ways that they are interacting with us as a brand. A customer can come to our site and download the app and spend 10 minutes looking at a particular product, or you know, a visitor can just come onto our site and just bounce off in five seconds. Uh, that's a very unpredictable way, and how do you basically connect the dots and make sure that you deliver the right experience, the right product, the right service, um, through the right channel to this customer. And it's not just um, one thing that we at Oracle realized, and this is something that I see on a daily basis, is that it's not just one stack or one technology or one solution can solve the problem, but it's it has to be an open ecosystem where if, if, if you know a customer already has or an enterprise already has a loyalty engine or if they have a ticketing engine or if they have a CRM system or any other service platform, how does marketing integrates with that system seamlessly as an ecosystem to empower the visionary marketing. So it, it's basically all starts from identifying the anonymous prospects, the anonymous uh, you know, visitors or the, or the people out there who are looking for products and services that we offer and making them our customer, a loyal customer. So right from targeting the audience, um, how do we find out people who are looking for services and products uh, that we offer? How do we bring them to our ecosystem? How do we bring them to our site? How do we make them download our app? How do we, how do we basically give them the right experience uh, so that um, they find us you know, worthy of their consideration time? And, and once, they, once, once we deliver the right experience, optimize the experience for them, how do we make them loyal? So how do we keep them engaged? How do we uh, bring new ideas, you know, bring um, loyalty into the mix? bring rewards, bring net promoter score into the mix, and finally, not just stopping the cycle there, but make it a loop in a way that we find out the hidden attributes, we find out who are the customers who are loyal to us, who are the repeat customers, and go back to our audience targeting and go back to a prospecting stage and use that intelligence into again finding out and fine tuning the right audience. So, Again, looking at it closely uh, from the tools and technology that we work at Oracle, um, Oracle acquired, uh, you know, started off this journey way back in 2010 when we acquired ATG, which was the Oracle Commerce. And a few months back when we acquired Mode, which is the, uh, which is the ad attribution and multi-platform and real-time advertising analytics platform. Uh, we have seen how, you know, uh, it's not just one vendor, one solution, but it has to be a combination of several solutions working together in sync uh, from the data perspective, from the assets perspective, um, how this integration happens and how, you know, an advertising tool can seamlessly talk to a personalization optimization tool and with ways it, it can talk to a marketing automation, sales service, and social tool and so on. So just to give you a just to give you a different perspective of how we at Oracle are um, you know looking at this solution, how we are putting this solution together. In fact, we have built this solution uh, as part of Oracle Marketing Cloud and larger Oracle CX portfolio. Uh, it all starts with data. 
the connected data. So, uh, and that's the bedrock of, of any pl platform, not just Oracle, but any platform. The data, the connected data has to be the bedrock because that's where everything starts. So how do you bring in your first party data? First party data could be you know, your own data, like when visitors are coming to your site, customer making a purchase on your site or downloading your app and leaving some, some information. How do you bring that data? Um, also, if you have any other sister concern or any partner who would like to share the data with you, that's second party data. Or uh, if you have a marketplace where you want, want to find out what are people doing outside of my ecosystem, that's the marketplace, the third party data, or any offline data like your loyalty or CRM. How do you bring this data together in one place? And data being the forte and one of the, one of the uh, you know, our DNA at Oracle, um, that's something that we sorted out first. And how do you bring all these data together, stitch this data in a unified way? And then um, go to the next stage, which is segmentation or micro segmentation and building an audience profile. Now your audience could be known audience who are your existing customer and you know a lot of information about them, like you know what, what they do, what they purchase, what kind of problems they have, if they have a service problem or if they are a satisfied customer, what's their CSAT score. So that's the known profile. And anonymous profile are just visitors to your site who have not yet become your customer, who are doing things outside of your ecosystem, but maybe they've come to your site and bounced off or maybe they should just spent five minutes on your site and not bought anything. So how do you how do you build this uh, uh, actionable audience profile and then use this profile to create the right experience for them, orchestrated experience for them for them across across search, across owned, across paid media, across email display, whichever channel the customer chooses. How do you create the right orchestrated experience for them? Um, and and it's again a little different from the B two C and B two B perspective. But how do you bring in these different channels together and create the intelligent orchestration? And then, then, then there is a layer which takes care of all your uh, marketing content, your assets, your blogs, your social media presence. How do you, at the central place, manage all these digital uh, experiences? And finally, once you have these you know, digital assets, your content, the channel, the audience, and when you're doing campaigns, engaging with your customers, um, how do you find out what's working, what's not working, what type of customers are responding to your campaign, your communication, and what type of customers are not responding? So, you know, just deep statistical insight into what's happening and then take some corrective action using the optimization suite. That's that's really what Oracle is doing from a, from putting the right stack together, understanding the problem that marketers are facing and then um, mapping it with the technology that we have at hand. But it's not just the Oracle um, you know, technology, but it also has to integrate and it also has to talk to various other solutions and various other functions which are working within the enterprise. So it could be the servicing team, uh, it could be the call center team, it could be the analytics team. And for that, Oracle has built what we call the, uh, the integration cloud service and also Oracle app cloud by which we can integrate to various other application and data sources within the enterprise. So that's really what Oracle has in mind. And, and again, coming from the Oracle consulting team and working closely on Oracle technology, I thought it will be nice to just give you a view of, of how we look at marketers' problem and what we are doing in terms of putting the right technology stack together to, to solve that problem. Now, to summarize, um, as I said, we, we truly believe that once, got, once you know, marketers are enabled with the right tools uh, to deliver connected experience, that's what is going to unlock the, the whole new level of visionary marketing. And, and eventually that's what is going to help brands be, uh, be able to herd above the noise. So that's really what I wanted to cover uh, in the first part of the session. And I see uh, there are some, some, some questions on the chat window, which I will, which I will take um, in the next session. Great. Uh, so thanks so much, Madhukar. And yes, there are some questions for you. Um, so I think, you know, it's great. You set the context of framework and also, you know, kind of highlighted the complexity of the space actually and how we could simplify it. Um, so now I'm going to have uh, Sainarayan come in and he's going to give us practical examples of what it is to deal with all this complexity and yet provide a simple 
you know, frictionless customer experience. So, Sai, over to you. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sai, the Sai. Um, just wanted to share my screen. Is my presentation visible? Yes, it is. But you might want to put it in. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, right. Great. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Madhukar. I think very, very insightful presentation. And uh, you clearly brought out uh, some of uh, the specific pain points of uh, marketeers uh, today. Um, um, one is attribution uh, is, is one of uh, the, the most uh, important elements that uh, we look at uh, in terms of you know, uh, how do we spend the marketing dollar on which channel, which source, uh, which medium, uh, with uh, which medium to scale up. So I think some some very very interesting uh, points there and how technology can uh, bring uh, bridge the gap between what consumers want and what uh, the marketers can uh, provide. Uh, so yeah. So uh, coming back to the uh, Presentation, my presentation. So, a quick background: uh, I head the marketing for uh, uh, Policy Bazaar and Pesa Bazaar, uh, and uh, <clears throat> this uh, the entire presentation I'm going to talk about uh, uh, transforming uh, customer pain points uh, into innovation. So, um, and we'll take you through two specific real-life case studies that uh, we have been able to implement uh, with the help of. Uh, uh, product innovation uh, in order to remove uh, customer friction. So yeah, so quick. Uh, so if you look at uh, the today's uh, scenario, so there is a need and there is a specific challenge. So you know, as you know, the business, uh, the way the business are growing and evolving into uh, evolving, and uh, there are more and more uh, people, uh, consumers uh, requiring uh, uh, consumers require each and everything very instantly. And, uh, and and business uh, uh, these days have to solve the problem and provide uh, pro provide things to them uh, at, at, at just a kick of a button. So uh, when if you and if you look at the challenge statement, uh, the complexity is actually identified as is is can we uh, can we clearly uh, solve the pain points of the consumers today, and uh, which is that is the biggest uh, challenge that uh, one has. So. Uh, if you move on, then uh, if you look at consumers today, you know, uh, they are uh, uh, from uh, looking at your uh, promotion on uh, Twitter to uh, so uh, sorry, looking at your promotion on TV to web banners to different mediums to radio to outdoor to digital uh, to retweeting your promo on uh, Twitter. So they go through a multiple uh, uh, multiple mediums, multiple sources uh, in order to. Uh, in order to get the get the message across, so uh, the so today the sum of experience of by consumers can uh, is, is also uh, can can lift word of mouth and improve the efficiency of any marketing spend. So any any communication that you do uh, can uh, can can have a really positive uh, rub off or a negative rub off. So uh, so and or or can and it can also do the opposite, just increase customer churn. Demolish reputation and you know, threaten the brand health. So that is the power that a consumer has uh, uh, in today's time. Um, and if you look at uh, uh, the uh, so now quickly going to uh, the Pesa Bazaar's evaluation happened because of uh, there was there were specific uh, customer pain points. So uh, firstly, the need why uh, uh, a platform like Pesa Bazaar was uh, exists uh, came into being is, is because uh, there is there was a specific problem consumer problem um, if you look at uh, both pesa bazaar and policy bazaar earlier uh, the way traditionally the way uh, the loans and the credit card and insurance were bought was all offline where they, uh, they either you used to go to the bank to apply for loan or you used to uh, an agent uh, used to come to your house to buy insurance so everything was uh, uh, completely offline 
and uh, and the bigger challenge was the time take uh, 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 the time taken to process a loan or to uh, get insurance was uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, the, the the time taken was extremely high um and the, the and the reason for existence of uh, uh, the uh, platform like us was uh, marketplaces is was to remove this and also if uh, uh, if you if a consumer has to uh, buy a specific product uh, he will research he'll, he'll do his own research so there used to be this concept called robo research uh, online purchase offline so people used to research uh, a lot of stuff online go on to different companies website uh, to zero on the product that they want to buy and then uh, they used to go offline and buy it so uh, a, a, a web aggregator like us a financial web aggregator like us you know just solves that problem for the consumer you come you log into paisa bazaar or policy bazaar you see all the loans and uh, uh, credit cards that you want to buy from different companies it's like a, a search engine uh, for people who are looking for a financial product so uh, so 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 that's that's where uh, so that's was specific so the if you look at the brand the brand itself is born out of a consumer problem uh, both the sabadan bolsa are born out of a consumer problem which is that is to remove uh, the uh, 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 remove the pain point of you know going through the entire process uh, of uh, of purchasing so yeah so if you look at uh, i'll quickly take you through the overall india's uh, financial service market so it's a 100 billion size of uh, india's personal loan market so 3 million people apply for a loan every month so 2 to 3 weeks av- is the average processing time of uh, any offline loan uh, and out of which if you look at 65% applications are rejected so that is a huge number so if some if out of 160 of those loans are actually rejected by the banks uh, at the time of application due to various reasons uh, either the, uh, the it's the city where they are coming from is not serviceable or their income is a mismatch or their credit score is uh, low because of that uh, there are a lot of reasons because of which banks reject loan uh, there is one uh, 1% of uh, penetration of omnis uh, and this is just 1% penetration of omnis credit products in uh, so uh, and uh, and contrary that 3.4% uh, penetration of uh, it is just 3.4% penetration of insurance products in india uh, 7.5% of india's adult uh, population have a credit card and 70% of india's uh, uh, of india are reserved by financial institutions so so this is the broad uh, um, financial services uh, uh, market and uh, if you look at the opportunity is still huge so there are over uh, 25 30, 20 30 plus uh, insurance companies 25 30 plus banks and still uh, with a, with a huge distribution network but still the market is uh, uh, you know severely uh, under penetrated <clears throat> so to uh, a quick uh, three slide of uh, three points which uh, we will share is you know how do we uh, how fueling transformation through customer uh, uh, how we can be fuel transformation to customer inside so at paisa bazaar uh, there are three things that we look at which is the why the how and the what you know everything we do we challenge the status quo to think differently uh, and uh, how we make uh, design and promote products that are user friendly so that's extremely important thing for us you know while you might have uh, while you can have a great seamless uh, 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 we are sight we will uh, the look and feel is everything is good but uh, do we have innovative products is is what the bottom line is um, and and in in the slides that will come you will see two specific examples where uh, we have used uh, innovative products to solve a consumer problem um, the what this is we just happened to provide a great financial services tool and uh, product to the consumers so quickly uh, take you through uh, how traditional offline process is plagued by um, information unavailability for a consumer if he has to uh, purchase a financial product today it's hard to compare uh, features and prices you have it's it's impossible for someone to uh, actually go uh, physically to find out what is uh, what are the different uh, what are the features of different uh, companies Uh, what is the loan rate of uh, uh, X bank versus what is the loan rate of Y bank? Uh, 
um, it is extremely difficult to uh, it's it's extremely difficult in the cumbersome process to find this uh, information. And uh, second is the lack of uh, transparency and fairness. Uh, so the other thing that happens is that you know uh, because <clears throat> because you are in a uh, urgency of buying a product. Uh, a lot of times there is a very very little transparency that the the partners or the person you are dealing with provide. <clears throat> the third point being the lack of resistance. You know, there is low comfort and reliance on uh, intermediary uh, players. There are a lot of other distributors and a lot of other uh, people who uh, which which provides lesser resistance and uh, delays in intensive paperwork. And this entire offline process has a huge paperwork uh, from. Uh, smallest of documentation to KYC to uh, to to uh, so by the time you uh, get your uh, loan or your insurance it, uh, it it takes a huge amount of uh, time. So uh, what we brought to the table was a uh, uh, few things which was extremely important, which is no ease of credit access um, and ease of comparison. That is uh, the the entire our entire brand has been built on the. Uh, Built on the fact that you know you can compare, uh, you can compare and uh, buy from all the banks that are available. Uh, the third point being convenience to choose, um, paper, uh, helping you helping people do paperless process, instant approval, and end to end assistance through our uh, uh, call center. So, but uh, we wanted to go beyond just being a comparison platform. So, while you know over a period of uh, uh, time we've been we have we built a brand on. Uh, uh, this e-differentiator, uh, which is uh, helping people compare the right insurance and the loan uh, financial services product, but uh, we began converting uh, uh, customer. Uh, but we, we thought it's it's time to move beyond uh, comparison. Um, and the way we did it was we started seeing what are the different challenges that consumer are facing. So you know, a uh, lot of times we have discussed that you know even a simple uh, customer problem, uh, a simple customer. Uh, consumer complaint that comes to our uh, uh, come comes on our social pages can be can be converted into a great product idea. So there were two specific cases like this which I'll take you through. Uh, the first one was uh, um, whenever uh, someone was uh, uh, coming to buy a loan, personal loan from us, uh, there was I, as I told you in the last couple of slides uh, back where. A uh, lot of people used to get rejected because, uh, and they were not getting loans uh, uh, while they, when they applied for it. And the biggest reason for uh, it was uh, the lack of good, good credit score. And uh, there was a complaint like this which uh, came to us. A lot of complaints like this were coming to us that, you know, we're not able to uh, get a loan uh, because the banks tell us that, you know, uh, there is, uh, you don't have a good credit score. So that's when the first uh, uh, that's that's where we started solving the first problem, uh, which is uh, we began converting customer problem into innovations. And how we did it was take an example of uh, this person uh, Mahesh. You know, he needed an immediate personal loan as his mother had to go through an uh, urgent medical process. He applied with two three banks, but was turned down due to a poor credit score. Um, so credit score is actually uh, shows your credit worthiness uh, and and basis which uh, your uh, uh, loan gets approved. Um, and uh, le and and uh, the biggest part is less than one person uh, uh, Indians are aware of their credit score. Uh, so what we did was you know we started running India's uh, biggest credit awareness program, uh, which is uh, uh, we tied up with uh, a credit uh, a partner called Experian, uh, and we brought this facility uh, to our site for absolutely free. So someone, uh, if someone, uh, anyone, any consumer can come to our site, check his credit score for free. Uh, and once he knows he has uh, a lot of confidence in terms of applying uh, for a, a personal loan. And it also happens that uh, it, we provide customized loans and uh, cards offers once they start checking. If you look at the screen, um, basis your credit score, there is a recommendation uh, for uh, which uh, bank will provide you your credit card, which uh, bank will provide you uh, a personal loan. Um, so, uh, and also this, uh, you you get a monthly refresh of uh, you get a monthly refresh of this uh, this report. So this uh, you know th th this was a specific pain uh, pain point which uh, we converted into uh, the India's largest uh, credit awareness program, <clears throat> and. Uh, 
and not we, we did, did not just stop there we moved beyond uh, uh, it and uh, where we started uh, uh, showing uh, the chances of approval so if you look at this uh, uh, co column where it's like your chance of uh, loan approval so while applying because of certain the details that they have put uh, the consumers enter a certain details and uh, because of it we also start showing what are the chance of approval and uh, so that we help uh, customers find the right lender at the right place so, uh, so if there is if they want a city bank an hdfc or a standard chartered uh, they will show uh, in, in the, the chance of approval shows that um, which bank is likely to provide them a loan. So this way, uh, it solves a uh, this solves a big big consumer problem by uh, telling them in advance uh, that which bank will provide uh, and, and uh, buy the loan from the bank, which is which has a high likelihood of providing them a loan. So then also, uh, not just uh, by doing this, you know, we, we created customers for life through personal finance and advice offers. So, you know, credit score uh, was, was totally simplified for them. With over right now, we have 2.1 million customers uh, who have checked credit, credit score from us. You know, highly engaged customer base with 70% uh, returning customers and uh, 100 plus data points to uh, determine the best offer that we can serve them. So. That's what happened in this case that, you know, uh, we extended innovation, uh, we extended this uh, simple problem, new problem into a complete innovation and uh, built it into their uh, life cycle. We not just stopped here, we also extended innovation <coughs> to uh, insurance products as well. If you look at, uh, and this specific case is for, uh, uh, for, for car insurance. So there's a simple, there's a big problem that, uh, uh, big challenge that happens. A lot of times what happens is that uh, your car insurance is up for renewal, uh, you're busy somewhere and uh, you miss the deadline. So, and uh, as you all know that uh, in India, not having the car insurance is, uh, is, is, is an offense. Um, and, um, and a lot of people after, if you've expired your car insurance, what happens is that there is a huge tedious and uh, cumbersome process of uh, uh, calling the agent uh, and they, uh, the, they will come and do an inspection of your car and uh, that takes a lot of time. Uh, so and again we had a lot of complaints from people that uh, there is a it's a big pain point and if I have lapsed my uh, motor insurance to renew it uh, is, is a huge process. So again a quick example of, uh, <coughs> um, uh, of, of a consumer you know he stays in Davis and uh, in, uh, in in near indoor and he wanted to renew my car insurance but uh, have been waiting to get insurance inspection of uh, to visit me for the last 10 days and also what happens is once it's expired the uh, the inspection office takes a huge amount of time so then we started this uh, entire uh, uh, program with uh, uh, and it, it usually it takes uh, physical inspection of motor insurance usually take you know take 2 to 5 days uh, longer for uh, rural or semi-urban residents, it's costly and time-consuming as well. So then, what we started doing was, you know, uh, policy visas, uh, self-inspection, uh, self-inspection. So what you can do is, it's a very simple process. You can actually do an entire self-inspection of your car through a, through the mobile app, upload it. Uh, then uh, uh, once you, uh, once you upload it, so you just have, you just have to take a 360-degree view uh, video of your vehicle from your phone. Upload it on Policy Bazaar app website uh, with other documents required. You get instant quotes and uh, quote and apply. Can you get your uh, insurance policy uh, within four hours? So that's the that's the amount of uh, innovation that has happened. Uh, gone into this a self inspection. You will get fired. Not a problem. You can do a self inspection. Upload documents and uh, the motor insurance policy is yours. So. So this, this, so these are these are two specific innovations that uh, uh, I really wanted to showcase, where there was a specific customer problem and how we solve it through a product uh, uh, innovation. Yeah. So uh, going forward, we are fast also moving towards uh, and uh, on the tap purchase for all financial products. Someone needs a loan, compares online, uh, e-application form. Uh, instant online approval, eKYC verification, e-sign offers—all this happens. It's, it's everything happens in less than one hour. 
So that is we're moving to instant uh, uh, instant on tap uh, purchase products. So this does not require anything. This requires zero paperwork, instant processing, wide choice, and uh, customized products. So uh, what are the other implications uh, for uh, us as customers? Uh, we keep looking at uh, what is the next customized product that we want to build in. You know, every financial service access uh, service accessible on our uh, mobile transaction costs uh, will be lower by sixty percent. Financial accounting, uh, we want to make financial accounting opening uh, uh, faster than we make uh, Maggie. So uh, these are the two specific case studies which uh, I wanted to share. And um, that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Uh, happy to take any questions if there, if there are. Thanks so much. Um, there are actually questions. Um, but yeah. let me just pick up some, uh, you know, like the broad thought is really, um, you know, how do we start the process? What, what's the kind of advice you would give to someone in terms of, you know, deciding your stack or your process? Sorry, come again. Uh, what's the context for the question? Uh, the context is people want to know how to get started. Uh, I think, um, that, yeah. How to get started in terms of... Uh, what should we put first, about? you know, yeah, in terms of what's the process for actually getting the journey started? Yeah, so I think one of the most important thing uh, to uh, to start the process is always uh, uh, think uh, consumer. Think consumer and think customer. So that's the that's the first, the foremost thing. Uh, of, of Even if you're a, uh, if you are a product manager or a marketing uh, head, uh, we have to think the think uh, think from the lens of a consumer. Uh, if you look at the two examples that we have shared, uh, the entire piece was seen from a consumer lens. Uh, what is beneficial for consumer? What is easy for consumer? Rather than what is easy for us to do. So uh, so if we, if, if uh, as a marketer uh, we see that things are uh, easy from uh, from my perspective. Then, uh, then, and, and it's not in the benefit of uh, the customer. Then it becomes uh, it, it becomes huge uh, disconnect. So, see from the lens of uh, <coughs> consumers, uh, what is beneficial for uh, them? How can we uh, uh, make uh, the buying process uh, easy for consumers? So that's is that it's it's as simple as that. But it sounds it sounds simple, but the most difficult thing to arrive at. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's um, so that is starting point. There's a very specific question for you, which I didn't quite understand. Which says, "I want to understand if the video is penetrated. How will you identify, and what are the measurements that you take care to provide the right policy value?" Um, Sorry, I missed uh, the context of that. Mayur, you want the, to clarify that? Is it about the self-inflection video? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, so can you read the question uh, or I can see? Um, the question was, how will you identify and what are the measurements that you take here to provide the right policy value? Uh, look, it is uh, mostly done by uh, the manufacturer uh, and the insurance uh, company provider. So if you have a Maruti Swift, uh, it is, uh, if, if you're talking about IDV value, uh, if the question is on the IDV value, then uh, <coughs> a lot of factors go in. Um, it's uh, not just the video that you take, but also the age of the car, uh, uh, how old is the uh, uh, the age of the car, and what which model. Uh, it, it's, it's petrol version, diesel version. So a lot of uh, uh, things go in uh, go into that. It's, uh, it's, it's mostly done by the uh, between the manufacturer and the insurance provider. It has nothing to do with the way you take the video. Great. Um, yeah. Okay, so one last kind of a comment which was addressed to Madhukar actually, um, so, and either of you can answer it, but you know, things that you've outlined, are they relevant to a smaller firm, a startup, and a B2B organization, or is it different if you are a large B2C organization? Um, Madhukar, the question was actually addressed yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, Jesse, and and as I as I responded on the chat window as well, and this is this is my view that 
regardless, I mean, whether you are a multinational, large organization, large enterprise, or a startup, CX, and as Sai also mentioned, right, you have to look at things from a customer's perspective. So the experience is, uh, is, is important regardless of what size you are. Um, and when you are a startup, you have the, you have the right time to you know, decide how you put the technology together in a step-by-step, -step, in a baby step approach. Whereas for large enterprises, what we've realized is that they have a lot of technology baggage as well. Um, if, if you are starting from ground up, then you have, you have all the things at your disposal to basically, and it does not mean that you, know, you have to get the best of the solution to start working with, but you can just start with, as I said, the baby step approach and um, just start collecting the data which is there, not not just you know put it in different applications from the from the day one itself. So my view is that regardless whether it's a startup or whether it's a big enterprise, CX and customer experience is important for everybody. The startups, in fact, are at, at advantage because they are not carrying the technology baggage and they can have a very sorted, very clean slate to to work on. Great. I think we've addressed all the questions. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank uh, both Madhukar and Sainarayan for adding a lot of value to this. And also, of course, to all our participants for investing the time in this topic. And we have the last in the series tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. So I hope you will join us again for that. Uh, tomorrow, our guest speaker is going to be Sumit Ramani from um, Infosys. So thanks once again, and see you tomorrow, and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to those who are wishing me a happy birthday um, as well. So oh, that's okay. a company birthday, not my personal birthday, but thanks so much. Thank you. Happy birthday to Paul Writers. Thank you happy so birthday. much. Thank you.